Ladies and gentlemen, I once again I welcome you back to our YouTube channel. In case this is your first time on this platform, please consider subscribing, hit on that notification bell so that whenever we post anything, you're always there to get uh, that notification. You're always the first to get the notification that yeah, you shouldn't miss whatever kind of episode we we'll put on our YouTube channel. So in case it's your first time, subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you'll be part of the family, yes. Um, today we've come up with another amazing video that I think you don't need to miss it. As we're looking at the reasons why Uganda, among all the East African countries, Uganda is not all that using Kiswahili. Please stay here and stay tuned. Uganda uh, is one of the East African community state countries. East African community consists of the following countries. Actually, there, there were the three uh, founding members, that is Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. Then others started joining, that is uh, Burundi joined, Rwanda also joined, South Sudan joined, then DR Congo also joined. And Somalia is also on the way to join because it has, it has been uh, scrutinized. Actually, delegates were sent to Somalia to uh, check whether Somalia can join the East African community member states. And the East African community has uh, its headquarters in Arusha, Tanzania, and uh, in the East African Parliament is also uh, functioning. And the Parliament sat and decided that Kiswahili should be adopted as the national language for East Africa. And for Kenya and Tanzania, Kiswahili has been its national language. Uganda failed to get its a national language since they got independent. Actually, Uganda has been uh, st struggling, has been maneuvering to get a national language, but they've, they have totally failed to get a single national language. For a national language uh, to be adopted as a national language, it should be widely known by, at least widely known by citizens in that country. Actually, in the castration, Kiswahili is the national language of Uganda. But Kiswahili is not widely known by Ugandans, and, and neither is, is it taught in many schools in Uganda. First and foremost, let us know uh, the history of Kiswahili. How did Kiswahili come to East Africa? Kiswahili is a Bantu language. It's not a foreign language to East Africa. It is a Bantu language. This language developed during the, um, the East African, actually the Arab trade, when the Arabs came to the East African coast and started trading with the Africans. 
um, during their interaction with the locals, the Bantus, uh, that is Kikuyu, um, Kikuyu people, uh, even into the interior of East Africa, even Baganda, Wanyoro, whatsoever, because the, uh, the Arabs could enter when they would come to the East African coast, then goods would be brought from the uh, interior to the coast. And these, the chiefs and whoever would, uh, would interact with the Arabs. The locals did not know Arabic. The locals could not speak Arabic. And the Arabs could not speak the local languages. So the only means of communication uh, was to form a medium of communication in that they borrowed some words from the Arabic language and they borrowed some words from the local language, then they formed a pidgin. They formed a pidgin. In that, this pidgin is just borrowing words from the different languages. Actually, you'll find even some words in Kiswahili were borrowed from, uh, from Portuguese when these Portuguese um, started occupying Mozambique and uh, some parts there. So these words were, uh, were uh, brought together and later the Kiswahili orthography was then modified and to become the Kiswahili we speak today. There is a saying that Kiswahili was born in Tanzania just because the Arabs came and settled around Tanzania, around Zanzibar. You remember the, um, the Sultanate of Oman uh, shifted his capital from Moscow to Zanzibar. And Zanzibar is part of Tanzania. That's why they say Kiswahili was born in Tanzania. It grew up in Kenya. Yes, it grew up in Kenya. You'll find that Kiswahili spoken in Tanzania is perfect than the Kiswahili spoken in Kenya, especially the interior of Kenya, the likes of Nairobi. We have Kis an, a Kiswahili spoken in Nairobi is very different from Kiswahili spoken at the coast like Mombasa, Kilwa, um, and Lamu, and those, those places at the coast is so different. You find that the Kiswahili at the coast is, is a bit better than the Kiswahili in Nairobi. Then they say, when it grew up in Kenya, it, it died in Uganda. When you, you reach in Uganda, Kiswahili really, really dies. A lot of people do not know how to speak Kiswahili. Some people say it fell, in, it fell sick in Uganda. It died in Rwanda and it was, I mean in Congo, and it was buried in Rwanda and whatsoever. It is just, just a, a, lot of, a lot of things messed up like that. But we are going to see why most Ugandans hate Kiswahili. Why most Ugandans do not speak Kiswahili. A few Ugandans can speak Kiswahili. Yet Kiswahili is a language of East Africa. Because, you know, as earlier as I said that some words in Kiswahili were even brought uh, from the Ugandan languages. Let me give you an example. Uh, in Uganda will say tonsumbua, meaning don't disturb me. In Kiswahili they will say usinisumbue, meaning kusumbua is a Kiswahili word that was got from the Luganda, from the, uh, Luganda language. You get it? There are a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of words that are in Kiswahili that they got from the Luganda language. In that, even the Luganda language, I'm using Luganda to represent the, all the Ugandan Bantu languages. The Luganda language contributed much to the Kiswahili language. In that it would be easy for the Ugandans to learn Kiswahili, to use Kiswahili as a medium of communication and whatsoever. But there are reasons why Ugandans hate Kiswahili and it will be, it wouldn't be easy. It will never be easy for the Ugandans 
to adopt Kiswahili as their national language, though it has been made compulsory in schools and whatsoever. Um, I have some little uh, things that I managed here to shortlist in that we can share together. First and foremost, during the 1900 Uganda Agreement, Uganda signed an agreement with the white, the, colon, the colonial government the, uh, during the, the 1900. After the 1900 Uganda Agreement, the reigning king, that was um, King Daudi Chua, opposed opposed the European initiative of making Kiswahili the national language. Actually, the colonial government uh, thought that thought that Kiswahili would be a neutral language to be made the national language of Uganda, and they had decided that it should be enrolled into all the s schools in Uganda. The colonial um, government decided to start teaching Kiswahili in all schools starting from primary one to the highest level of education. But the Kabaka, the reigning Kabaka by then, uh, Kabaka Daudi Chua, thought that this um, this will lead, uh, actually will demote him because uh, people will be taught another language, uh, the Baganda will be taught another language and forgetting their Luganda, Luganda language. He immediately opposed it and because the colonial, uh, the colonial government were ruling through the Kawakas through the local leaders, through the traditional leaders. So they also adopted what he was opposing, then they let, they let go of the Kiswahili language. Kiswahili language was eventually stopped being taught in those, all the schools by then. Then the other thing is um, Kiswahili language it, uh, has got a bad history. First of all, it is a language of the army. During, uh, during Amin's regime, Amin also promoted Kiswahili. Every, every army officer was supposed to learn Kiswahili. Even during Museveni's time, every army officer, the military, must know Kiswahili. And uh, during a minute regime, actually every order was given in Kiswahili. And besides that, even the criminals um, uh, used to use Kiswahili. Whenever someone would attack you home, like the robbers would come and say, hey, to aviato, whatsoever, later pesa, you get the point. Fungwa mlango, such a things. People, uh, you know, they passed a lot uh, through a, uh, that Tamil time during uh, those days that they associated Kiswahili with bad things, with bad images, with bad characteristics. In that, whenever someone would attack you, they talk bigger. We will talk about such a things, such such Tamil orders people decided to hate Kiswahili forever and forever. Then the other thing is, um, unlike uh, I, I mean, during Amin's regime, Amin dis, uh, decided to promote Kiswahili into the army, but they failed to promote uh, the teaching of Kiswahili through all, throughout the schools. They did not mind about teaching Kiswahili. So the education curriculum did not mind about teaching Kiswahili. Not until today, just of recent 2019, when Kiswahili was started teaching from, like started being taught in all schools from primary one to the highest level of education. Unlike Kenya and Tanzania, where actually during uh, Julius Nyerere's time, Kiswahili was modified, and Nyerere, being a teacher himself, modified Kiswahili and made 
a lot of progress. This did not happen in Uganda. So that's why you find every Kenyan can speak Kiswahili, but in Uganda, Kiswahili is regarded as a foreign language, yet it's not a foreign language. Most Ugandans cannot speak Kiswahili just because of the history of Kiswahili. Kiswahili is associated with the tyranny, Kiswahili is associated with the military order, Kiswahili is associated with crimes and whatsoever. So regardless, regardless of all this, Kiswahili has been adopted as the national language of East African community and Kiswahili is now being taught in most in every school. It, is, it has been made compulsory in all schools all, at all levels of education from primary up to the highest level that is university. Kiswahili is being taught. Just starting with 2019 the curriculum now teaches Kiswahili, and eventually you'll find uh, people adopting it uh, uh, slowly, slowly, slowly. Um, even if you go to the parliament of Uganda, very few members of parliament can speak in Kiswahili if they decide. Like actually, right now you can uh, legislate in Kiswahili, but very few of them will understand Kiswahili if you legislate in Kiswahili. So otherwise, that is the simplest reason why Ugandans do not speak Kiswahili. Actually, they hate Kiswahili. Actually, there's a time when a debate sparkled where, um, between some people that, oh, Kiswahili, people regard Kiswahili as a foreign language in Uganda. Yet, it's not a foreign language. It, it is local language. Otherwise, I wish you the best in case it's your first time on the platform. Please consider subscribing. Hit on the notification bell so that whenever we post anything, you'll be notified. Can you please uh, sh um, comment? put a comment down in the comment section? What do you think is the reason why Kiswahili is not common in, East, in Uganda? In case you are from East Africa, is Kiswahili common in your in your locality? Even I know some 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 um, uh, some tribes in Kenya that do not like speaking Kiswahili. The likes of the Kisi, they told me Kisis do not like speaking Kiswahili. When you go to the Kisi community, the Kisi um, county. Most of them use their local language. They love their local language so much. Like in Uganda, when you come to Baganda, they like Luganda. They like Luganda. Actually, Luganda is more taught in secondary schools, more taught in schools than Kiswahili, just because they like their culture and they think when they learn Kiswahili, when they adopt Kiswahili, they will have dropped their culture and maybe people will not um, know uh, uh, their culture and the origin and whatsoever. But that's it. I wish you the best. Let me chill up. Thank you very much. I love you all.